No matter what sport that you play, there are a lot of rules to know, especially when you get up to that professional level. But like most of us, we're recreational players and we simply play to have a good time. But whether you're a professional disc golfer or a recreational disc golfer, there are some staple rules that everyone needs to follow. So today on Just Disc, I've selected the six most important rules that every disc golfer should know. So let's get into it. Starting off with the rule number one, throwing order. Whether you believe it or not, throwing order has a big impact on a player's mental performance. It's also a bit of a sign of respect to the player's performance on the previous hole. So how does the throwing order work out for the duration of a round? Well, if you're just starting a round, there are so many different ways to figure out the tee off order. Things like rock, paper, scissors, flipping a coin, heads or tails, flipping a disc. It's really up to you and your group. Now, what about the throwing order after the tee shots? Well, it's the person who is furthest from the basket who gets to throw first. And it's very important that those people who are closer wait off to the sides and are not in their line of sight. Because honestly, there is nothing more annoying than having someone in your line of sight or in your throwing path. And it just creates some doubt in your mind. It creates a bit of a distraction and you just can't throw the type of throw that you're looking to do. Now for a lot of casual games, it is not a big deal at all. A lot of people like to play ready golf, whereas if they're at their discs and another player is not, they simply throw to save a bit of time. But it's a good thing to discuss with your group before you start the round. Moving on to rule number two, marking and throwing from your line. This rule has to do with throwing or putting your next shot after having teed off. Now there are two ways that you can mark your previous shot. You can simply mark your previous disc with a mini marker, or you can simply leave the disc on the ground and throw behind it. To mark your lie using a mini disc, you need to place your marker directly in front of your disc. You then remove your previously thrown disc and you then throw from directly behind your mini marker. The advantage of using a mini marker over just throwing from behind your previously shot disc really helps with putting because it gives you almost an extra foot closer to the basket. But you may want to not mark with a mini marker in the fairway because it's a lot easier to throw from behind a bigger disc than it is from a mini marker. Now when you're ready to throw your next shot, you need to make sure that you have one foot directly behind your mini marker or previously thrown disc. Now you can still walk up or even run up to throw your disc, but again, you just need to make sure that your front foot finishes behind the mini marker followed by the release. And if you step forward ahead of your mini marker, that's okay as long as you release the disc before doing so. Evidently, it's very difficult to keep one foot directly behind your mini marker, especially when you're trying to concentrate on your shot. So that is why the PDGA created the 8 inch by 12 inch box, where if you're a little bit off to the left or to the right, you're not going to be called and you're not going to get a penalty of one stroke. So there is a little bit of leeway for stepping to the right and to the left, but just really be sure to try and be directly behind your mini marker. Now, one thing I see often on the disc golf course, and it's a common problem, is when people are straddling out from the bush or from a tree, they have their one foot behind their mini marker and their body and their other foot stretches out ahead of their mini marker. So just be careful of that because your playing partners could call you out on it. Now moving on to rule number three, out of bounds and hazards. Out of bounds is an area or several areas on a hole where your disc cannot come to rest. Things like roads, water, fences, sidewalks, they're almost always considered out of bounds. But it's a good idea to check the course map or check with course members to see what are the out of bound rules. So what is the procedure if your disc ends up out of bounds? Well, you first need to decide where the disc first crossed the OB line. And you can sometimes discuss this with your playing partners. But once that is decided and you figure, hey, it crossed right here, you then can take up to one meter relief in bounds. So you'll see a lot of people take one, two, or even three steps 
and then place their mini marker and then shoot from that location. You just need to make sure that it's no closer to the basket. But what happens if your disc is somewhat straddling the line? What do you do then? How do you know if it's inbounds or out of bounds? Well, this rule is actually quite simple. If you have the line and there's a portion of your disc, even just one quarter or even one tenth of it, touching on the other side of the line, which would be considered inbounds, your disc is then in play and there's no OB penalty of one stroke. But if there is no part of your disc touching on the inbounds portion, it is then considered out of bounds. Now a hazard is just like OB, but instead of taking relief and putting it in bounds, you are simply playing your disc as it lies. But remember, you're still incurring a penalty stroke of plus one. Moving on to rule number four, mandatories, also known as mandos. A mandatory or mando is a designated area of a hole that your disc must pass through. Often trees, poles are used as mandatories where for instance, you have to pass through the right side of it, left side of it, or in between two objects. If your disc does not pass through the required mando, you then incur a penalty stroke of plus one and you have two options. You can sometimes play from your previous lie, which may mean re-teeing from the tee pad, or you can simply play from the drop zone if there is a drop zone, which is a designated area that you throw from if you miss the manda. Now moving on to rule number five, moving obstacles. Just like ball golf, you cannot be changing the environment around you to get a better shot. So moving things on the ground, breaking branches, moving rocks, bending things, holding things, none of that is allowed. You simply play it as it lies to make your next shot. Now, if your arm or some part of your body hits something after releasing the disc, you do not incur a stroke of plus one. So basically, find a stance that works best for you. Don't move anything, don't change the environment. And if you hit something after you release the disc, it's not a problem whatsoever. Moving on to the sixth and final rule, the 10 meter putting rule. Within 10 meters or 33 feet of the basket, you must demonstrate full control of balance behind your mini marker after releasing the putt. And it's only once your disc has rested in the basket that you can then step forward. Now outside of the 10 meter circle, known as circle two, you can move forward, you can jump forward. However, I have been hearing some rumors and the PDGA may make a rule against this in the near future. We're just gonna have to wait and see. Now evidently, sometimes we don't intentionally mean to move forward. And that's why in a tournament round, if it happens by accident or it happens for the first time, you are often given a warning and you just have to retake your putt. However, if it does happen again, you can incur a penalty stroke of plus one. Now a quick tip that I often hear to avoid stepping forward or being too eager to get your disc is to remind yourself to pick up your mini marker first and then head to the basket. So I hope that you are now feeling more confident, more informed about the staple disc golf rules. If you have any questions, don't forget to comment below. And if you wanna see more informative disc golf content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Just Disc, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt.